Hi, I'm Lizandi Boval Jones. Welcome to the HTS e poll. It's your opportunity to weigh in on the most pressing issues of the day. But first, a word from our sponsor, Flow. St. Lucia, we've got great news for you. Flow's home internet just got better. Now, with faster internet speeds, you can surf, binge, play, and stream non stop on St. Lucia's most reliable network. The best part is the speed increase is on us. So enjoy more of what you love with speeds to keep you connected and entertained. Visit discoverflow.co today. With Flow, it only gets better. Welcome back. The start of the 2019 academic year has been disruptive for a number of schools as teachers at those institutions stage protests over the poor working conditions. This comes despite the allocation of $10 million for the repairs of schools for each of the past two years. The responsibility for school repairs was shifted from the Ministry of Infrastructure to the Ministry of Education. However, the Ministry of Education has been roundly criticized for its handling of the school repairs, citing the manner in which contracts are awarded and the lack of qualified personnel to oversee the works. So we asked you, should the management of the school's repair program be reverted to the Ministry of Infrastructure? We tallied the numbers on our various voting platforms and here is how you voted. 65% of you said yes, 31% said no, and 4% did not know. We also took to the streets to get your opinion and here is what you had to say. In my view, Colimo, I believe that certain things have to be left to certain professionals. By that I mean, if infrastructure are the ones who have the technical capacity in terms of engineering, I see absolutely no reason why education has to be the one who has to make a determination on that. So therefore, it is my view that where you have the technical capacity and the technical expertise, these are the persons who should be dealing with that. And I am not confident that the Ministry of Education would have all these expertise to handle that. I, I believe it should, stays with, it should stay with a Ministry of Education. But then again, I realize nowadays chi the children are protesting, the teachers are protesting of mole infestation. So I think um, probably whoever they give these duties to, probably they're not doing a good job. So if not, we'll have to send it back to the Ministry of Infrastructure. Yes, I believe that's a, a good idea because the Ministry of Infrastructure, that is their work, they could handle, but the education side, they have too much to handle because just watch it. We, we have demonstration, teachers demonstration, students, where there is too much on their hand to handle, but the infrastructure, at least they could send out the contract earlier, the subcontractors could get the things done online in time for schools opening. But with the Ministry of Education on that, too much on the line, sometimes two weeks, three weeks before school open, they rush and do our work and nothing never done all right. But with the infrastructure, that is their line, that is their part of duty. So then they could handle that better than the Ministry of Education. I think Ministry of Education should concentrate on dealing with education and, and leave these things for, for infrastructure. I think it is wise that um, they have the contractors, they know the contractors and what they can do. And I think what should be done in the future is to prepare things a bit earlier, you know, set the, um, the, the format somewhere in July and then you execute your, 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 your things in the summer when school is closed. You know, I think that's how it should be. We, no suppose there's a um, protest for L'Ecola because L'Ecola for me, uh, July, you take the whole July, whole August for L'Ecola. It's not for you to fermer L'Ecola, my mother. It's not for you to do education, my mother, because you don't protest. Question is, is Ministry of Infrastructure supposed to take over? Yes, supposed to take over. Well, personally, I think on what we have in St. Lucia, the mole infestation in St. Lucia, it's not an overnight thing. It's not something that happened like yesterday or today. Moles take a period of time to accumulate and whatever is happening to do weather conditions. Everybody complain about climate change. Climate change is one thing. Weather conditions is something else. But if we have that existing problem and the Ministry of Education just took over, handling that problem, I think, in my opinion, and uh, logically speaking, I think that, should, um, that the Ministry of Infrastructure handle that aspect, that aspect of it. Because of the things that are moving, teachers are strike, and they are malade, so you're supposed to take over. 
Thanks for those responses. Now to our new discussion. On Monday, a woman was the victim of a hit-and-run accident involving a motorcycle in Castries, the second such incident in the space of two weeks. There has been an apparent increase in the number of serious accidents involving motorcycles. Some of these motorcyclists have no license or insurance. So we want to know. Should there be a nationwide crackdown on motorcyclists riding without a license and registration? Voting is easy. Just log on to htsaintlucia.org or Facebook at HTS Saint Lucia Official and cast your vote. You can also send your response via text or WhatsApp to 584-4HTS. That's 584-4487. For Flow Handset owners, here's a reminder for your special voting platform. From your Flow device, text your e-poll response to 487. Press 1 to vote yes, 2 for no, 3 for no comment, and 4 for I don't know. Join the discussion from your Flow device and get the opportunity to win weekly prizes. And our ePoll team is always on the go to get your responses as well. Watch the HTS News Force from 7pm for the results and a new discussion.